the question came up about identifying uh, color saturation with uh, the RGB sliders. Now we know with the HSB sliders, but basically this is, you know, a color wheel is 360 degrees. So when it says a uh, number of degrees here, such as 120, that's basically pointing to a position on the color wheel. Uh, that becomes more important later when we start to worry about color harmony. Uh, it's also important now for identifying hues and identifying complements. Uh, but one of the things that we haven't really talked about is how to use it, uh, RGB sliders to do that. So let's go ahead and take a minute and look at that. Now all these numbers I'm suspecting are going to be off by about one. Uh, you may have noticed from the earlier video where we created this image that the RGB was set at 16-bit. Uh, I had it set there for a different thing. I hadn't unset it. Uh, it's one of those mistakes that happen, uh, and that's the result of that. Uh, we could go through and ch change that now, but you know I, I don't really consider that 1% uh, an issue for our purposes. So what we're looking at here, you know, in a fully saturated situation, one of the three values will be at 255, and one will always be zero. So if we go around here, we'll see uh, that that's always the case, that one of these are always zero, and one is always 255. Uh, and it, it's very closely related to this idea of mixing paint from the traditional system. You know, here we're mixing equal parts of green and blue, both fully saturated, and that's how we get this secondary of cyan. Uh, you may notice as I went around there, or if you've been looking at your own, uh, that each of these 15 degrees are basically 64 units uh, of whatever color is being mixed. So in the case of going towards Q15, we have to add 64 units of green to get that yellow uh, essentially in there that we're looking for to create this appearance of orange. Uh, but we can talk about those uh, more as you go on. It's something that if you start to look at these, you'll start to understand it a little bit better. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though with this is when you're starting to create tints in a situation here like where we have a secondary, we have the uh, hue magenta, I can switch this HSB and let you look at it, Q300, uh, basically fully saturated. To create a tint in this situation we have to remember what system we're working in. So we know that all three primaries mixed together start to uh, create tints in the additive system. So if we start to add green, basically what we're doing is we start to create a tint of magenta. And we'll see that a little bit better soon there. If we go to HSB, well at this point we'll have a tint. Uh, you can see that there by the B value still being at 100% and the white be, uh, beginning to be added here. Uh, so one of those, these are one of those things that you can start to figure out as you work with it. Another thing to figure out is if you have both these R and, G, uh, R and B values uh, the same and you lower them, you start to create a tone. So essentially you're starting to add black by keeping them the same. Uh, we have them now set at 215 and we go back to the HSB and we still see it's hue 300 and we're seeing that black being added that way. Remember the absence of light creates black in this situation. So we take all three of these down the whole way. Back up there. You'll see that we have black. And so any time that the three come together, uh, in the case of zero, in the case of a 255 for white, or in the case of any of the grays, let's go ahead and switch to a gray, you'll see that they're equal. So at this point, it's hue 194. Now to identify the value of gray, we can we start to understand that as these numbers get higher, the gray is getting lighter. As it goes uh, lower, the values go lower. It starts to get to become a darker value. Uh, this this can be helpful as you go forward, especially when we start to look at transparency and, and identify transparency if it's correct or not. Uh, we'll be relying on the RGB sliders, and that's during week four. Uh, for week three, HSB is going to be the way to go. But I did want to touch upon some of these points at this at this time just to kind of start to clarify what these RGB values mean if you're not familiar with them at this time. Uh, if there's specific questions about this, let me know. We'll address those as they come up. Uh, but this should give you a good foundation to start to understand how this looks at. And your color wheel is key to starting to look at that. So you can go back and forth between the HSB and the RGB values. And you can also go back to this, the, the scales during week one, the tint shades and tones, and they'll help you further see how these numbers relate to an actual color. And of course, if there's anything else, let me know. Thanks.